Okay. Hey everybody, welcome in to the Reheal Show podcast. How's everybody doing? It's a Monday, so you got Jose Partida, which by the way, Jose, you are now the most popular episode. So congratulations. You and your following have built this up to one of the most, it is the most popular episode, but I haven't been doing as many because I just get, I get so busy with other stuff like sitting around because, you know, there's nothing else going on. But regardless, Jose, congratulations. You have done a great job. This is my favorite. This is my favorite because we get to catch up. And basically what we do on this episode, it is a live edition of the podcast. So if you want to for just, you know, 8.30s on Monday on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. You can find it. The links are readily available. And we just we just recap the week. Basically, we recap the whole group thread that we have. That's, like, that's, <laughs> that's what it really is, right? Like we just It kind of is. That's what my show prep is. I just go back and look at, oh, here's what we talked about. Okay, cool. So uh, I put that in the rundown. So that's what we I do, do something. This- yeah, I do something kind of similar when when we're putting together the rundown, and I, I just stop. I I can't like think of things that I we need to put on there. I just look through either our group chat, uh, or I look through my recent likes on Twitter to make sure I don't miss anything <laughs> that that we that might have happened because Twitter is the almighty source now, right? It really so yeah, is. I, I I do I do something similar as you. I do. I want to get off it so bad. Why? It frust. It just people are so stupid, and it and it frustrates me. But that is literally the the only way I can I I get my news. Like everything is on Twitter. Yeah. See, I I like the fact that we have the group thread uh, with me, you, and El Jefe, and I have some other group threads as well. But they're not as active. Uh, but it helps me because I'll get my joke off on something stupid. And then move <laughs> along. Like. It, 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 you get your jokes off without the backlash, without the, you know, hurt feelings. And people just get so upset about everything where you think they would be a little bit more strong. I don't know if that's the right word or understanding that, like, dude, it's a joke. It's not a big deal because there's plenty of people that I follow that I know personally, whether it be in the media, whether it be friends. And they just tweet the dumbest things. Like, it's like their first time on the internet. And I just want to respond to them. But you know, then what happens is people get upset. People text you. Then they call you and like, hey, why'd you do that? And like, dude, it's just a joke. And I'm just pointing something out. That's it. So it's not even worth it anymore. So that's why the thread that we have on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and on text, it, it, it's good for me. That That's why I like Twitter still is because... I can get my joke off. I can interact with people and any negative people. I just ignore them. I just ignore the negative stuff. Like literally I ignore them. And then anytime I want to get a joke off, I send it to you and El Jefe and that's it. Yeah, I've, been, I've just been unfollowing people. I've just gone on a massive unfollowing spree of people who annoy the hell out of me. And uh, it's, okay. it's, it's helped a lot. Who's one person that you can say that you unfollowed that won't hurt feelings? Oh, I can't. Everyone, Come everyone, on. everyone's the spiciest one. Everyone's everyone's uh, everyone's feelings would be hurt. You Let's know, just say they're also in radio. Of course, radio and, uh, people are the most sensitive people, dude. And uh, they're kind of frauds, both of them. Wow, ooh, this is spicy. Yeah. Ooh. Maybe 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 if uh, no, never mind. I'm not gonna put that out there because people will actually do it. Text me, text me, come on. I, I need to know this. I need to know. You already I, I, know. I already told you who it oh, okay, was. Okay, I, yeah, okay. Okay, I know who you're talking about. Okay. I got you. I got you. I, I don't want to. Yeah. Okay, we're good. Okay, <laughs> so you just unfollow people now. See, I can't. Yeah, that's that's just my thing now. I don't know. I I unfollow people that I don't know. Like, if I followed you randomly or whatnot, I'll unfollow you. But if it's somebody that I know, it's hard for me to unfollow. I don't know why. Josh says that I, it's 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 not okay, and that's Raheel's buddy. I never followed him in the first place. Hater. Will came right now. I was doing a cross-country road trip, and he's putting up really cool videos that I think you would enjoy. Who? Will Kane. Cares. Yeah. Boom. Roasted. Nope, too late. I already answered it. Too late. Too late. <laughs> Hold on, uh, White Jose, unfollow me. You were saying stupid shit on Twitter, bro. That's why. Whoa, that got aggressive. That got oh, really sorry. Aggressive. I'm sorry. Uh, how's your week, man? Everything good? Dude, I'm literally air frying everything. Like, you are? <laughs> literally air frying everything. 
anything that I I just think of of cooking is just like, can I can I put that in the air fryer? Why not? And uh, so far, every pretty much everything's been successful except salmon. Yeah, Did people. It uh, people no, it didn't. It just really dried it out and made it almost rubbery. And people on Twitter uh, love love the air fried salmon. So maybe I'm doing it wrong. I don't I don't think I am. But uh, it was way too dry for me. It wasn't worth it. Uh, what's the best thing you made in your air fryer? Best thing I I've made. Probably like you buy the you buy the frozen steak fries, and uh, of course I'm I'm Mexican, so we have more fajita seasoning seasoning at our house that what we'll, than we'll ever need in our whole lifetime. So just just sprinkle a bunch of uh, a bunch of it on on those bad boys and uh, go to town on them. Okay. And reheat, reheating uh, chicken wings is really is where is that really good on there? Chicken yeah, wings are good. I made uh, I made homemade Nashville chicken. On Friday, how'd that go? Uh, it was okay. It was okay. So I fried it in you, real oil. I didn't air fry it. I like legit fried it. You coming from? Uh, coming from Mikos? Yeah, you coming from Mikos neck? No, no, I'm not coming for them. They're they're the OGs. I just didn't want to drive all the way to Mikos or somewhere else and whatnot. So I was like, let me just make my own. Let, let's try it out. The only issue I had was, you know, the hot oil that you make. So, so few recipes yeah. were like, you gotta go room temperature and do it. Some were like, just hmm. do it while it's hot. And when I did it, it was hot. Like while I did it, it was hot. What happened was the brown sugar started to caramelize, and it wouldn't stick to the chicken. The seasoning wouldn't uh. stick. So I had to like rub the seasoning on afterwards, and then it was delicious. But I will say, it was a pretty good sandwich. It was a pretty good sandwich. Okay. All in all. It was a really good sandwich, and of course, I did air fried curly fries with it because air frying fries is way better than deep frying, in my opinion. Ever do mozzarella sticks in the air fryer? Ooh, I need to. I'm a big mozzarella oh, stick guy. It's good. Literally anything that's fried that you do in the air fryer to me is a little bit better. Like it's yeah. just a little because okay. it doesn't have that oil, right? Additional oil on there, so. It is cool. Like um, Jibby is asking again. You think Harden got COVID from the strip club and gave it to Brody? I have no, <laughs> yes. I have no idea. But look, based on what was publicly happening when the lockdown started, right? You go back to May. You go back to April, even. Um, you go back to March. I, I actually, yeah, it was like first the the first week of lockdown was when James Harden is still out there at. Tinsley Park working out with a bunch of guys like of course you're gonna get it you know and I know at first everyone was like oh you know I'm not gonna get it and as it started spreading people started becoming smarter but you see the trainer still putting up videos of Harden working out with like random dudes or they're still out in public like yes you're gonna get it hell him and little baby are just driving around so yeah Got it, it's it's as simple as this. Look, if you're gonna stay at home, you're gonna limit your interactions. You're gonna be smart about everything. You might get it, okay, but your chances of getting it are much lower than just going about life like usual, right? Like that makes sense. So I wasn't surprised, and I don't know if James has it, right? I don't think it's official yet. We know Westbrook has it, but based on everything that is being said and the time that he's out. One can assume that James Harden has COVID nineteen. Yeah, that's that's the thought. Obviously, earlier today, uh, Russell Westbrook announced to the world he has COVID nineteen. And when uh, I think it was on Thursday or Friday, we found out that Harden and and Westbrook were traveling with the Rockets mm -hmm. to Orlando. And everyone was the immediate thought was, "Oh boy, they they both have the COVID." And sure enough, Westbrook confirmed it today, and it. It sucks because I know we usually don't really dive that into I actually into sports. I actually had a had a I was actually excited to see what they could do in this situation, the Rockets, because mm -hmm. I ever since they made the trade for Covington, I enjoyed I enjoyed watching them play again. It was like that. What season was that? The sixteen seventeen season where Harden was running the point the year before Chris Paul. Yeah, that 15, season was. Yeah, that season was so fun for me because they moved at such a different pace. And it kind of was starting to remind me about 
uh, of that season with with Russ running the show, and it's it's pretty disappointing. I don't know what the turnaround is for for someone like Russ who has no symptoms. He said he's asymptomatic. So how soon can he be there? Uh, it's just uh, it's a very confusing situation. Yeah, I think it's going to be a learning process, and we'll figure out like you know all of this, like everyone else, you know, not even the sports world, just in general. What are the long term effects? Is there going to be a flare up? Is there going to be anything that you have to worry about once you are playing in an NBA game? Who knows, right? Like you don't know what your body's going to react until it happens. Right. Unfortunately, there's no, no case studies of that, right? That you, Gobert hasn't played in an NBA game since he caught it. Donovan Mitchell, we don't know. Like they haven't pushed their bodies to that limit. Like they've probably gotten close, but we don't know. And I'm with you. I, from a strictly like rooting interest standpoint, I don't like James Harden. To me, I can't root for him. That's it. I just can't root for him. I love Westbrook. I was excited when he was traded here. Um, and then Covington, you add him. And then I had a chance to spend a day with Robert Covington for the story I did on ABC 13. And now, like, just talking to him, and, and again, like, not even the interview stuff, but just off the, the camera, Yeah, I'm rooting so hard for this Rockets team, even if it means James Harden's going to win a championship <laughs> and all the James Harden losers are going to just be buck wild. That's fine. Like, you know, root your guy on. But I am all in on on this team because of Westbrook one and because of Covington. Yeah, you don't understand how cool of a dude Robert Covington is. He's going to join us on the podcast, like that's uh -huh. it's locked in. But I don't know when because their schedule's all jacked up right now. Yeah. But um, he's such a cool dude. He's such a good dude that like you want to see them win. And I'm with you since you know it was that um, the year they lost to Golden State. The first year where Golden State went on to win the championship against LeBron and uh, Della Vadova, <laughs> <laughs> um, that was heartbreaking. Like I was all in on that team. I, yeah, I, I was. I couldn't believe that team pulled it off, and I, I was rooting for him. And at that point, I was rooting for James Harden, right? Like I, you know, he. I I said he was going to be a most valuable player when he was in Oklahoma City, and he got traded to Houston. I've got the receipts of this. I say he's going to win a most valuable player. Like this guy's numbers, if you extend him out with the minutes and you extend him out with touches, he's going to put up ungodly numbers. Like that's just how it is. And sure enough, like it worked out and he won the most valuable player. But then we start learning about the guy a little bit more. You start learning about other situations. You're like, nah, I'm, you know what? I can't root for you. I'm sorry. So. Long story short, he's a single man, Raheel. Let him if he wants to go to a strip club on a Tuesday oh, afternoon. Mind your business, dog. I, it's not even about the strip club. It's just all the other stuff. Like, oh there's yeah, there's always an excuse. There's always this. There's a book report, and maybe it's some of the rocket stuff that that you know sours the taste there. But um, yeah, so that was it. That that like I can't wait, man. Robert Covington is such a cool dude, and uh, I I got a chance to go watch him work out with his uh, with his trainer Jay who also played on my basketball team, rec basketball team. What's up, Jay? Pass me the ball every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I can't wait, dude. Okay, let's do the NBA bubble drama because okay. NBA Twitter came back with – Hallelujah. It is – NBA Twitter is the best Twitter. We all know yeah. that. Okay, it's the reason why Twitter is so much fun during the NBA game is NBA Twitter. For those of you that don't understand what NBA Twitter is, NBA Twitter is – Everyone tweeting about NBA stuff, but the memes, the funny ass tweets that come with it, it's just this, it's just like secret net of hilarious people, right? Like it's so yeah. good. It's it's the best, like it's the best fan base, like sports fan base on Twitter without yeah. a question. And now we have uh, the NBA, the NBA Twitter account, the at NBA Bubble Life on Twitter and on. Uh, Instagram that's just collecting literally every player's uh, social media post from the bubble, and it kind of started with 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 God, who was it that made the account start to pop off? Wasn't it the uh, the food stuff? With it, it was yeah, it was the food stuff. I, I was trying to remember who what who what player it was, but uh, essentially what's been going on is that that account will just collect literally every single post from every NBA player. 
and share it on Twitter. <laughs> and I don't know how many people are behind that account. I would assume it's more than, than two because that's yeah. a lot. That is a lot of information to keep up with. And we've gotten so much gems out of that thing already from J.R. Smith having to leave Instagram Live because someone from the Lakers, Lakers organization is telling him to get off it. Ben Simmons missing, throwing a fish back into the water. Boban and Tobias Harris uh, rekindling their friendship. Like We've gotten so many gems from that. The, and, and now, today, the newest gem was you can't even go pick up food. If you cross, there's a, there's a, a yeah. line. There's a line, a quarantine line, as uh, Shams tweeted out, because Woj is suspended. Hashtag free Woj. R.I.P. R.I.P. to the homie. Although my boy Shams got a big gift on a, a holy day for us uh, on the 13th. Uh, what was it? On the 11th. Excuse the, me. The F.U. was a big gift for him? Yeah. The suspension of Woj came on a big holiday for uh, like a religious holiday, a religious day for uh, hmm. my people. And Shams is one of my people. So why why aren't sh- isn't your people uh, upset about that? that? Why isn't why? your people upset about the fact Woj gave you guys something on a holiday, and he's why? being that's penalized why. for it? I haven't. That's why I haven't tweeted my support of Woj. I'm like, good. Put him down. <laughs> let let Shams eat a little bit here. <laughs> let Shams grow. Let him flourish. But Shams had the tweet. Uh, I don't even know who the the center is. Uh, but a from center- the Kings, right? Uh, Kings or Bullets? Who was it, Kings? It was the Kings. It, okay, so, yeah, yeah, Kings. Kelly Oubre was the first one to say, guys, you can order Postmates and go pick up the food. Like, go ahead. So this this center, this young kid from the Kings, orders it, goes out, and he passes his imaginary quarantine <laughs> line and now has to be in quarantine for eight days. And then... For somebody, ten days. Ten, oh, ten days. days. He's so, been through two. Oh, and then somebody snitched on him. Like, the story leaked. How, why, what happened... Really? I didn't, I missed that. Yeah, somebody said, did you just say bullets? Come on, Raheel. Did we say bullets? We you did, you did say bullets. Oh, I noticed that. Bad. Yeah, bullets. They're always Showing your bullets age. to me. I'm sorry. But that's right. In the PC culture, we got to say wizards. But, but the wizard also has a KKK tie in, so are we allowed to say wizards? Mmm. Mm. Good point. Mmm. Got it. So, I mean, NBA Twitter has been so good. Like, we've got dudes breaking quarantine to get Postmates. You find out the food, like the food, doesn't look that bad. Like, oh, it, it looks look terrible. Bad. It doesn't. It looks look like that bad. it looks like cafeteria food. I love how everyone's like, "Oh, NBA players complaining about everything with that sorry ass cafeteria food." Yes, it's edible. Yes, they're going to be okay if they eat it. But if you're gonna front and act like it's some incredible, it's people. I'm you, people if I got people that, need it's to banquet pick food. It's banquet food. If you got that food at a banquet, you eat it. You make it work. It doesn't. Of course, you make it, it work. It doesn't look that bad. It did not look that bad. It's whatever. It looks. It looks like cafeteria food. Yeah, it, it looks like food you would get at a huge resort. That's like, well. I, I'm, I'm not at resorts it. like you, big dog. So I yeah. can't. I can't relate. Like that's the kind of food you get when you have a huge gathering at a resort. That's what you get. Like prepackaged stuff. Here's here blah blah food, but it's edible and it's good. I would totally eat it. I would totally eat it. And of I course, you totally it. eat it. I would and enjoy it. Have you seen like, I think it was Chris Haynes was posting uh, pictures of like the media media dining area and how incredible that looks with all the snacks. Yeah, man. It looks good. Did you see? Um, is it Malika Andrews? She's the one covering covering it for ESPN and Sports Center and ABC. I believe that's her name. Uh, look, let me look it up real quick. I feel bad getting the name wrong. Um, I think it's Malika Andrews. I'm pretty sure it is. Yes, it yeah, is. Right? Yeah, she's doing a great job. Like I've been watching her hit. She's really cool. She gets it. Uh, but she she said they bring. So she was in quarantine, and they like you have to be in quarantine for four days when you get there. But they get food like breakfast, lunch, dinner delivered to their door. They've got NBA staff bringing them workout equipment if they want in their <laughs> hotel room. I would love to be in the NBA bubble. I think I would flourish in the NBA bubble. So, uh, someone, I think it was Josh, asked earlier, who would you want to be your NBA bubble buddy? Probably Covington. Oh, fuck you then. <laughs> Why? I, I'm literally right here, dog. No, I thought he meant like an NBA player. I don't. I don't think so. I don't think that's what he meant. He oh, didn't say. No, he didn't say. Not you. NBA definitely player. not you. No way. You and I would be the worst. <laughs> we would be the worst bubble buddies. 
Why would we? Would, why would we be terrible bubble buddies? Okay, because one, I would like. Okay, you've never gone on vacation with me, right? You've never gone on a cruise we or a resort, right? We've never done that. Our so, only thing we ever planned was the All Star uh, yeah, break thing, and that didn't happen. Roughnecks. R.I.P. Roughnecks. R.I.P. Roughnecks. So what I do when I go on a cruise or anywhere that I have like catered food, a gym, a basketball court. I'm working out twice a day. I'm eating good. You know, like I'm making it into a workout camp. So you and I, if we were bubble buddies, you would get annoyed because I would be legit like, all right, let's go morning workout, <laughs> you know, get ready. We're going to ice bath. We're, we're going to be by the pool, we're, you know, get get ready for the evening workout. And that's what I'd be doing. I, I think, think you, you, I don't think you'd flourish in that kind of environment with me. Are you calling me lazy? No, I'm calling you not as committed. Wow. Okay. Okay. PJ Tucker's still my man crush, El Jefe, although he didn't respect the rules of the shelter in place either. I saw him at the Galleria when I was picking up food and I was like, hey, PJ, you got to be committed what? to the, you got to be committed here. Okay. I can't see, I can't be seeing you at the Galleria. Here. What shoes was he wearing? Uh, I didn't see. Honestly, he... there's, there's so much traffic. I just saw him and I was like, what are you doing here? I wanted to put my window I'm like, sir. You have a championship to win. What are you doing? What are you doing? Please. Or maybe he's like, whatever. I don't, you know what? I'm PJ Tucker. Rona don't mess with me. Josh me says me and him would be bubble buddies because we'd uh, have an air fryer on deck. Facts. Yes. See, there you go. That's more Facts. like it. you and Hell FA would be great bubble buddies. David Nuno and Raheel, bubble buddies. Ooh, I love you so much, <laughs> Nuno. <laughs> Because two a day, Nuno. Yeah, two a day. Two a day. Let's go make ads for Goya, Nuno. Whoa. Get out of here. Can't bring up Goya, dude. What are you doing? Can't bring up Get out of here. You would be... Okay, do you admit you'd be a horrible bubble buddy for me? I don't think so. You would be... I don't think I'd be a horrible... Not every day, but I would be down for two a days. Okay, so you would do it one time, and then you'd be so sore the rest <laughs> of the week that you wouldn't work out. I think... Raheel, I think today we should stay in and... and uh, Play some Red Dead Redemption 2 or something. I don't know. Um, the other thing we miss, PJ Tucker's 85-inch TV. That's right. <laughs> PJ Tucker has an 85-inch TV in his shelter-in-place quarantine room at the NBA bubble. Good we for him, man. Just like, I was like, man. Like, look, PJ Tucker, obviously, he's a millionaire. He can do whatever he wants. And I was like, gosh, you already make me feel poor with some of the shoes you show off. And I'm like, damn, an 85-inch for your hotel room? That's pretty damn cool. And I hope I feel he, pretty poor. I hope he donates that TV afterwards. Mm, yeah, I wonder what he's gonna do with it. Cause you can't ship it back. Like, what are you gonna do? Spend all? It's gonna cost as much to ship <laughs> as right? the TV yeah. cost initially, right? So, uh, who knows? Um, the other thing that we missed from the bubble, man. Oh, the conference, the banquet, banquet slash conference room courts are badass. I oh it. yes, I saw that. I love so, that. Where did you want to play on one? So how do those work? Like, are, are those for, just for practice purposes? Mm -hmm. They're so not they playing have, on those, right? They're not playing on those. No, they're going to be playing their games in three venues spread across the wide world of sports. So the way this is going to be done is because there are so many teams there, you can't, you know, practice on the same courts. So they built out, I think it was three in the banquet hall. There's, a, a, there's additional two courts in a practice bubble somewhere else. And then there's another facility for practice. So the banquet ones are the best ones. Like that needs to be on NBA 2K. That would be <laughs> so dope, right? Like you're playing, you're playing in the Walt Disney banquet room courts. Man, come on. Yeah, that that did look pretty sick. Man, I there ha there has to be a doc crew in there, right? Like there has to be someone documenting yeah. documenting all of this. There's a player doing it. Um, I forgot his name. He's younger. This is his. He started a YouTube channel and. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. I forgot his name because it wasn't interesting enough for me to like go subscribe oh. and look at it. But I know he's doing it. Like he's documenting this whole thing, and it's a it's a bench player. It's nobody that we would recognize. I don't think. So like they, it's, a player is doing it. But you're right. The NBA is definitely doing something, and there's only ten media members allowed. And it's five hundred and fifty dollars a day to be there. Wait, what? Yeah. So the media, like TNT, ESPN, if they send a media member like Chris Haynes, right. uh, Malika Andrews, they're paying five hundred and fifty dollars a day. Oh my goodness! Yeah, 
I didn't realize that. I didn't yeah, know that this was is like because it costs money, right? This right, is, sure. Yeah, this isn't like e- even when you go to an All Star game, you got to pay, right? You got to pay for your hotel, yeah. your food, all that. So this isn't a free deal because the NBA is paying one hundred fifty million dollars to do this. No, they'll be all right. Yeah, they'll be all right. But again, it's not free, right? Like these tests, the food, the the resort rooms, all that. So that's why they suspended uh, Woj. Yeah, they, they wanted to good. save some bucks. Although, here's the other caveat to all this. So, if you have a reporter there right now, and you want to send a different reporter because you don't want to send a reporter there for three months of that person's life, right? Like living right. in this bubble, that can't be healthy. One, like mentally, it's just exhausting, right? So, if you want to send somebody else, it's forty five hundred dollars to put a substitution in. That's for what reason? Because it costs money to reset everything, the test, the room. Jesus. I guess that's why. Like, it's going to cost money to do all this. So the NBA is like, you guys want to cover it? You guys want access? That really isn't access because they can't interact with the players. The media can't. They're not close to the players. Yeah. Um, I'm sure that, like, she could do her job because she's she has a lot of sources, by the way. So she could probably just text and get that done, right? But... I don't know. Like, everything's on Zoom calls. There's no post-game conferences. So this is going to be interesting. I know the game broadcast crew, they're going to have they're gonna have that figured out where they can talk to them in person. But they're going to be 12 feet apart, two mics. So it's going to be it's going to be totally different. Sounds like a scam to me. It's, you got to follow the money. Who's winning in all of this? The NBA. ABC and Disney. Because Disney has the games, and they get the money on top of this. Thank you, Disney, for everything you do. You are awesome. Make sure you watch. No, they're uh, not. Are yeah. they? Are, are they paying us now? Uh, no, but ABC Thirteen is owned by Disney. Oh, okay. you're right. Oh, there you go. Follow the yeah. money. Follow the money. Okay, follow the money. White Magic had a question. Are you talking about Coach Jay, who played in Italy, who went to Middle Tennessee? No, I'm talking about Jay Sutaria. He's a trainer. Um, and he focuses really like a lot on the mechanics and technical side of things, so he's awesome. Uh, but I'm talking about him, not that coach, Jay. All right, uh, so the NBA bubble drama, anything else that we missed on the NBA bubble drama? Mm. Uh, P.J. I, Tucker packed 90 pairs of shoes, is that right, 90? I didn't realize it was that many, holy crap. Yeah, he packed that many shoes. Another player only took two. I did see that. I saw that, like, um, there's people, oh, Dwight Howard, I gotta bring this up. Dwight Howard was the only one. So the NBA is doing, <laughs> they're doing DJ sets yeah. with. I don't know, like I don't know if they're big DJs or up and coming guys. I don't know, but they're doing DJ sets on the weekends at the pool, and Dwight Howard was the only player to show up at these like lame DJ sets. <laughs> and I think that would be him just there by himself. <laughs> like, yeah, this is kind of cool. I think that'd be kind of fun to watch. How long do you think he stayed? The whole set. <laughs> I can guarantee it. He stayed the whole set. Oh, that would be so awkward. Yeah. Because you can't, you can't leave. Once you realize you're the only person there, that must be so uncomfortable. You can't leave. But to stay the whole set, like you have to at least like fake a phone call or something. Mm-hmm. So, uh, have you have you gone on a cruise? I think I've asked you this before. No, I haven't. You haven't, right? So at the like on these cruises, or if you stay at a resort in you know Cozumel or uh, wherever, if you're like they have activities every single night, okay? So like the resort or the cruise, they plan a bunch of stuff. Like literally, it's you know you look at your brochure and you go, oh, uh, John is playing acapella today, and he's doing '80s songs, and you go watch that, right? Or you want to go play bingo or sports trivia whatever it is so me being the ultimate cruiser all right like i go to these things and i drag my wife and daughter and whoever's with us i've gone to places where i'm the only person there like dwight howard like they'll have this thing and i'm like oh this is pretty cool they're doing you know 70s music from idaho tonight cool i want to go to this I'm the only one there. And then you have to stay the whole time. You can't. Oh, my goodness. You can't because you see that performer yeah. on the cruise. Like, you know, like they're on the you cruise. You might catch them at breakfast the next day. Exactly. So <laughs> I've done that. I've gone. I, hey, that's why I appreciate Dwight Howard. 
supporting the arts. Because that's what he's arts. doing. That's what he's doing. By being the only one there, he's supporting he, the creative. He could be the person who's, who, who makes that one positive impact to save that one music career from one of yeah. these uh, EDM DJs. And here's the other reason why we wouldn't be good bubble buddies because I would like I'm going to all these things and then I go talk to the performers. I'm like, dude, that was really good, man. Keep up the great work. Like I can sit, sit there like a dad and I give them words of inspiration. That's what I do. That's my that's that's my life right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on Twitter, so NBA Bubble Drama, it's fantastic. The Twitter account again, Jose? At NBA Bubble Life. All right, so make sure you guys follow that. It's so good. Instagram and on Twitter. Right. Um, on Twitter, over the weekend, we had a big debate that broke out on Twitter. You on had Sunday. a big debate. Yeah, and I stand by this, and I, I can't believe people don't believe this to be true. There was a guy who tweeted a question out and said, what is your favorite bank robbing movie? Not bank heist. He literally put bank robbing movie. So I quote tweeted it with, the Dark Knight. I said The Dark Knight is my favorite bank robbing movie. And that started a whole discussion about is The Dark Knight a movie about bank robbery? And I say yes, because the entire first act is based on the banks. It's, you know, obviously the Joker robbing the bank and, you know, that establishes how how great of a villain he is and all that. Right. But then the like the next 40 minutes of that movie is all about the banks setting up the the mob, uh, the mob banks and you know them being a, a step ahead and getting uh Lou out early like there's there's so many different things or Lau excuse me Lau gets the money out earlier so he beats you know Batman and the entire Gotham PD to it I think it is a bank robbing movie that happens to be, you know, that you got Batman in it. I don't, I don't necessarily disagree. <laughs> yes. I, I don't necessarily disagree. It, it, it I mean, I, w I want to say it's not, but a third, at, at least a third of the movie is, inv is involved with bank robberies. Yeah. It's just, okay. So like another good example of a bank, a bank robbing movie would be the town right with uh ben affleck i rewatched that recently because it came on after i watched something and i couldn't stop netflix in time i was like <laughs> oh no, i don't want to watch it but once it's on i was like okay i'm gonna watch it now so i stayed up till like 2 a.m watching the town so it, the town is a legit bank robbing movie but then the discussion is it's around the final, the final act of that movie is all about what? Do you remember that movie? I've never seen that movie. Oh, it's, it's a great movie. Like, you'll enjoy the movie. The entire final act is around baseball. So is it a baseball really? movie? Yeah. I don't want to give away the plot too much since you haven't seen it, since it's so new, right? Like, it's, gosh, it's only like 10 years old. But uh, <laughs> I, I don't want to ruin it for you because it is a good reveal at the end. It's pretty cool. So A good twist? Yeah, it's a good twist. So then I was like, is that a baseball movie? I don't know. <laughs> by, like, by your logic, it is a baseball my, movie. Yes, yes. If it's taking up that much of the movie and it's that impactful in the story, then it's a baseball movie. Uh, Paloma, uh, Paloma says, this is a good tweet. First name, Robin. Last name, The Bank. <laughs> Ooh, Robin The Bank. So got him. Isn't classified. Hold on. This is an interesting one. Uh, El Jefe says, isn't it classified as a superhero movie? Yeah, for... Super why, are, why do we have to put superhero movies in a box? They could be more than one thing, Josh. Exactly. Okay, Avengers. Is the Avengers Infinity Stone about superheroes? Or is it about a supernatural force that exists in the universe that's trying to take over our world? It can't just, be, it can't just be a superhero movie. Isn't it also satire about uh, pollution and the way we are destroying our world? Or maybe not satire, but social commentary? It could be. What if? But no, it's a super, superhero movie, so it could only yeah, be one thing. It's just a superhero to Josh. movie, Simpleton Josh. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay, what about, uh, like, for example, is Thanos just representing the worst of us? 
and we're just trying to defeat the worst of us. So is this a movie about the human spirit or is it about guys playing dress up in a, in a fake creature called Thanos, Josh? What is it? <laughs> aren't you guys, aren't you the guys that tipped $80 at the pizza place? Oh, hi, Edwin. That's one of my, my childhood uh, besties. Uh, they have a running gag about the time uh, we had a, a, Chris, a, a birthday party for another one of our friends and we got bougie pizza and uh, it was late at night. The, the pizza shop was about to close, and uh, I tipped them like sixty bucks <clears throat> because we ordered like eight pizzas and like fifty wings. And it was a big order, and they were like really upset that I tipped them that much money. I'm sorry, I'm a generous person, unlike your so. Wait, the ass. pizza people were upset, or your friends were upset? No, my friends were upset because oh. they're stingy, uh, stingy individuals. Let's put them back. I'm up sorry, quick. I'm not. I'm sorry I'm not a rude person like you, Edwin. Edwin, you are cheap. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so The Dark Knight does qualify as a bank robbery movie. Agree. Only if the talent can qualify as a baseball movie. Boom. All right, so that was a big discussion there. <laughs> uh, did you say Nuno? He was doubling down on this, too. He just defends, he defends The Dark Knight no matter what, though. But, like you, but what was your what was your criticism of it? I don't see it as you criticizing it. No, no, no. He was defending it against other people because he was on my side. Yeah. And, like, dude, Nunez was anchoring on Sunday, okay? So when he's anchoring, <laughs> he is slammed. It is like one of the busy like, – yeah. he was just telling me, like, he was just, like, explaining what anchoring days are like for him. So on his busiest day, my dude went to Twitter, saw my dumb tweet, and, like, took it as a mission <laughs> – to defend the Dark Knight, it was awesome. And I'm like, hey, so, don't, you, don't you have a show to get ready for? He has like three newscasts you got to anchor. So is uh, the Dark Knight his uh, my college dropout for you? Yes, <laughs> that, <laughs> that like, makes sense without a doubt. Like that is it for sure. Okay, uh, Jada oh. Pinkett and Will Smith. Jada Pinkett Smith and Will Smith. This took the internet by yeah. storm. I mean, like I haven't seen the internet this wild in a long time. I watched the first two minutes of the interview, okay, and I lost interest. I I don't care. Like to me, it's not interesting. I don't care what happened between Jada and Will Smith and their relationship. I don't think I care about anybody's relationship that much. So, yeah, so yeah, like what explain to me what happened? Because I know so, you watched it. I didn't watch all of it. I watched I watched the clips on Twitter because everyone was having a field day with it. Uh so Jada Pickett Smith, along with her daughter Willow and a couple of other people, do that those those table talks, right? And they have for over a year now. I never really watched them. But uh I know that's something that a lot of people like. And apparently they had they had a a breakup Jada and, and Will like a year ago two years ago and she started dating uh, August Alsina who is an R and B artist and uh, people were just like losing their minds when August did an interview with I think it was Angie Martinez uh, just talking about how essentially she manipulated him and uh, they were they she he thought she was going to help him get through his mental health issues and they ended up dating and it, it's just a big messy thing that mm -hmm. i half know about because i half read tweets about them before i lose interest in it but yeah i'm kind of i'm kind of with you it, it's i don't i think it's really cringe when people it, it like is, right? obsess with like celebrity relationships i can't think of a celebrity relationship that i've cared about like the drama in there, like like actually caring, not to make fun of, to you know, not for. Okay, I know purposes. you're not. I know. I know you're not Tell saying this, Kimye. No, I don't care about the relationship. Yes, you do. No, I you can't don't care even, at all. I, no. How I, many I kids do they have? They have North Saint. Uh, <laughs> I know their kids' names, but I don't care about the relationship. Like if. If Kim was sleeping with Ray J again, or Kanye oh, was Lord. sleeping with Amber Rose again, whatever, right? I wouldn't care enough to like go watch them talk about it. To For me, nine that's minutes, not interesting. For nine minutes. For nine minutes, and then 
poor Will Smith. I guess he did this. <laughs> he did it right to clear the air, right um, to provide. I don't know relief for his fans. I don't know what it was. Why he did it? Why they did it? Honestly, like for what purpose? If something like that's happening, don't you just talk amongst yourself and be like, "Look, here's what's happening. I know it's in the news. Maybe we release a statement. I don't know." But he does all this, and now, as Joel Anderson put it, which by the way, you got to listen to that episode, Joel Anderson Slow Burn Slate, that episode before this one on this podcast. He put it. He's like. Will Smith did something really kind for his fans, and now he's the new Jordan meme. Like he's the he, he's getting jokes thrown at him. It's disgusting. I don't know. It, it, it he didn't have to do that though. Like part of it is the fact that that show is really popular on social media. Okay. And of course, they had to put out another episode since August Alcino ran his mouth about it. So I kind of don't feel that bad about it for and for and his. Uh, and the perspective of Will Smith is because he didn't have to do that. He didn't have to agree to do that. I'm with and, you. That's that's the whole point. It's like he, I guess he did it because for his fans, right? Or did he do it for the clout? Like you're not gonna. I think he. I think he that that did clout. it for the. I think he did it for the clout of that show because that show is really popular uh, amongst young millennials who care about celebrity culture. Clout. He doesn't. It does he need clout? But like celebrity he released a TikTok and he would have done just as fine. He would have been a hero. Right, but I just I think I, I th- that show I'm telling you that show is really really popular. Okay, I I think it was for the clout, and it's 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 really cringe when you think about it that way. And then they had a tagline about like it was I think was it a Fast and Furious reference? Uh, when they're like, no, it was a Bad Boys reference. It was it was a reference to the catchphrase him and Martin Lawrence have, uh, which I. I is escaping me right now but that's how they ended it and it was super cringe which yeah. makes it seem to me like it was really set up and fabricated which makes it even more cringe on top of how was cringe there, it already was there is an ad or a trailer for bad boys 4 in there halfway through it you, yeah like the, you got the the point, a mid-roll commercial for bad <laughs> boys 4 did you watch that or is it bad boys 3 is it 4 or 3 see i don't even know like, i think the, i think they were awesome. on 4 lost, yeah 4 Bad Boys was cool. Bad Boys was cool when you were in middle school. And you're like, oh yeah, Will Smith, he's awesome. Look at that. This is great. And now you're like, I don't want to watch it. I don't want to yeah. watch two. I don't want to watch fifty year old men trying to catch bad guys. Like I'm out. Sammy has it. Of course, of course, Sammy has it. We ride together. We die together. Bad marriage for life. That's cringe <laughs> as hell. Oh, that's so cringe. The, and that like they said it like together. Like Will said the first part. She said the second part. They said the third part together. Like this was all fabricated. Stay woke, people. Ugh, that is disgusting. I will say, though, the entanglement memes that came out of it were gold. Yeah, that was pretty good. So uh, there's always a silver lining in a social media. Yeah. Have you ever cared about a celebrity relationship like to that extent? Be honest. Uh, At the peak of my Kanye West fandom, I did care about Kim Ye, but I kind of, after they had okay, North. What did you care? What did you care about? I just thought, I thought they were cute together. Okay. But that was like in 2013. Now I don't, I don't care. Yeah, like he, it was like he was obsessed with her. Right. Like legit obsessed with her, right? And like, there's some stories that I've heard from sources. People. Yeah, from sources. I can't repeat them because they told me not to. But it is, it's a good story. Like it's really cool that he ended up with her and all that. But I never cared enough to be like, oh, what's been happening with Kim? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or anybody. I don't think like, there's an. Is there? I can't think of another one. Yeah. Frankly, there's. That's why. Like, I don't like reality shows for that. If I watch reality shows, I want to watch for the cringe factor, not because I want to know what Heidi and Spencer are doing or, um, what's her name, Jay Cutler and the other chick, his wife, his, ex-wife. his now ex-wife, right? Yeah. Like, I don't care. I don't like. I think it's more interesting Jay Cutler trying to catch who killed his chickens. <laughs> so when I saw this trending, it was just, I was like, man, people are so bored that we really care about this. Uh, I don't know if it's it's a bored, I don't think it's a bored thing. It's just a weird, we're obsessed with celebrity culture thing. Okay, that's fair. I don't yeah, think it's right. a boredom I mean, factor. Yeah, like TMZ wouldn't be a billion dollar company if we did yeah. it there. Yeah, you're right about that. You're right. 
Okay, uh, so Jada and Will, anything else on that one? I think we hit everything. The memes are great. Yeah. Fantastic. He really is the new crying Jordan face now, right? Yeah, and I, I feel no sympathy towards him. No, okay. All right. Can you uh, explain real quickly uh, DJ Academics to me? <laughs> yeah. Because you keep, you keep, you and Josh keep sending me memes about this, and I'm so lost, but I don't want to seem uncool, so I don't ask you guys, but what okay. is happening? So DJ Academics is this uh, now former complex uh, personality who has been into the hip-hop media scene for a while now, but he always does some really questionable things. For example, saying uh, that girl that was on uh, Dr. Phil that came became popular and turned into a rapper, Bad Barbie, Bad Baby, whatever the hell her name was, he said something about she has nice breasts for a 15-year-old a couple oh, years ago. No. Uh Earlier in the quarantine, uh, so he said he that. said she he posted like Kylie Kylie Jenner thirst traps and said, "Damn, Kylie gave us fat material for months uh, <laughs> with with this with this latest with these latest pictures, like really cringe stuff like that." I mean, that one's not bad. She's of age now. That's this. That's weird as hell. What are you talking about? Why is that weird? Who who says that? Who says that? Academic. Ky- I wouldn't even say that in our group chat where we say everything. Like, that's weird as hell. <laughs> he is literally, a, and Josh says it, he's a rap blogger. That's literally him and that Adam22 guy who is a culture vulture. Like, these, they're, they're rap bloggers who don't do anything for rap other than just clout chase. Okay. And that's essentially what he is. And he got caught up in a mess with, uh, with Freddie Gibbs, which to me is one of the best rappers out right now. We don't give him enough credit. Uh, he's a street rapper who comes up with with pop culture puns. He's one of my favorites. And I don't know where the the beef started, but Freddie Gibbs has just been killing him. Freddie Gibbs dropped merch, uh, making fun of academics. Freddie Gibbs was behind the cancel academics that actually worked. So we finally met the person who's who's uh, who's lost to cancel culture. Nice. And it took Freddie Gibbs dropping merch for uh, Complex to fire <laughs> to get him fired. Okay, so it was just hit, the actual beef. What, what, like, what was there anything specific that started it, or was it? Just I don't know. Work? I don't know what triggered it. Freddie Gibbs dropped an album uh, last month, so maybe it could have came from criticism from academics about that album. That wouldn't surprise me. Uh, but once Freddie Gibbs got a hold of him, it was a wrap. Okay. Um, other things. All right, I think yeah, you explained it pretty well there. I'm still confused, but I think I'm supposed to be confused. I think this is a way to cancel me out, honestly. It's like, oh, you don't get this? Okay, cool. And uh, you're an old. Yeah. You're um, an old. Okay, other things. LeBron tweeting about free Woj. Any thoughts on that? I, I mean, he's right. Free Woj. People people are going to kill LeBron because of... Look, man, he he protected his money during the whole during the whole fallout with, mm-hmm. with the Daryl Morey tweets. Which I was, I at the time I was really disappointed, uh, because LeBron is such an activist for social justice in America, and ultimately he did all of that to protect his pockets because Nike is such a big, big market. Uh, excuse me, Ni- China is a big market for Nike and for LeBron's shoes. But for us to act like we are, we we don't live in a glass house to be is always funny. Uh, so that's my big big thing. Uh, my big takeaway from that is. Maybe look within us before we try to talk all this mess about LeBron James. Yeah. I think Pablo Pablo Torres put it best, right? He's like, all you people that are attacking LeBron James act like you care about what's happening in Hong Kong and China. Again, none of y'all knew about it until that tweet went out from Daryl Morey. And it, it became a big thing because all the conservative bloggers and the right started attacking him like, oh, I thought the NBA stood for all this and this and blah, blah, blah. Like, you guys didn't care about it. Be honest. Nobody cared about it. And and, it, yeah. and there is a correlation between those people who, for some reason, care about uh, social issues in, in China mm-hmm. and everything going on in Hong Kong and the indifference towards the ones here. There is a correlation between that. And you, and, uh, you guys are kind of telling on yourselves with that. Absolutely. Uh, so for those of you who don't know what happened, Adrian Wojnarowski, who's a reporter for ESPN, he got an email that was 
pretty much criticizing the NBA from a senator in Missouri, Josh Haley, Holly, and it was like it, it basically said, "I'm gonna, uh, I'm just gonna sum it up for you guys." Like, hey, how come the NBA doesn't have Blue Lives Matter related things for their jersey, right? Like we talked about this last week. NBA is going to have jersey messages on the back of their jerseys. Only the ones approved by the NBA, though. Empty gesture. LeBron James is approved. So he's putting James on his back. Um, He should have put the Lakers on his back. That would have been hilarious if he did that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But anyways, this, this senator was like, Oh, how come you guys, you know, the NBA didn't do this, blah, blah, blah. And Woj is like... Bleep you. Bleep you. That's it. He just simply responded with F you. And you know what the crazy thing about that is? It's one of those, like, generic, like, spam emails from a politician. Mm -hmm. So that he never sent it. There's no way in hell he sent it personally to Woj. No chance. Well, someone, an intern in his campaign probably sent that. Yeah. And there's no way in hell he ever sees that tweet. I mean, excuse me, he never sees that email other than the fact that they directly emailed that email to Adrian Rojanowski, which for those of you who don't know, in the media, there's these things called black books that have have emails and sometimes phone numbers for other media personalities. And if you if you get a hold of the ESPN book, it has the email of every ESPN personality. And honestly, they're not that hard to find because they're all similar. This was all done intentionally. Yeah. And, so and he this, was looking to rile someone up within ESPN, and he, he got Woj to bite. Now, did you see the interesting thing to come from this in regards to Senate ethics? So he's a senator, right, from Missouri. Right. Somebody, uh, a reporter, I forgot from where, but she had a really good thread about this. He, he can't use this to rile up his base because he tweeted it from his senator account, not his re-election account not his public not right. his personal account so him using senate emails to rile his fan base up or his constituents that is an ethics violation and at, add to that he left his email in uh in the screenshot of that yeah but you can get you can get a senator's email like that no I mean, he left public. he left woge's email openly oh, okay. on the screenshot if you look at the screenshot woge's email is on that Oh man, now he's about to get bombarded. Hey, uh, which again Woj, you is it... time? Fifteen minutes for a uh... real oh, radio man. hit. I was gonna throw some shade at you guys, but I didn't do it. Do it. No. Do it. No, I'm not gonna do it. Coward. I don't want to do it. You know why? Because I'm the bigger man. That's why. And I don't want to get an email tomorrow saying "f you" <laughs> <laughs> from people in charge. But uh, yeah, it was, dude. It was disgusting. So this guy also, uh, the senator. He's a senator, right? Correct yes. me if I'm wrong. Or a congressman, same thing. No, it's not the same. Thing. It's a huge difference. Uh, senators don't wear face masks on flights, like Ted Cruz. He's a senator. Congressmen do wear them. Um, that's a real story, by the way. Ted Cruz. No, I, I saw the picture. Mask. And then his defenders put out another picture of him on a different flight. Like, no, he was wearing a mask. He was drinking a coffee in that picture. The armrest is totally different. <laughs> like, how do you not notice that? It's like two different planes. Side note, okay, back to Senator Haley Holly. Uh, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but this dude is a total snowflake. And I hate using that term, but he is a legit snowflake. So during his campaign, the guy that he was running against uh, is Austin something. doesn't matter who it was. There's a guy, I, I found this old radio interview that this guy did when during the re-election time where he put up, he was... Josh's neighbor, Josh Holly's neighbor, and he put up the other guy's sign in his yard. And Josh came to his house and was like, you can't have that up because it's in our neighborhood bylaws. You're not allowed to have political signs up. So you're going to need to take that down. The sign didn't stay up for more than 12 hours. Like this dude is that guy. He is going to he's going to become the victim. He's he's a Karen. Yes, that's perfect. He's a Karen. I, I, if you got an email like that, who cares? But you had to run it to Twitter and tell everyone, like, Asky was so mean to me, and he said F you to me. I can't believe this. Like, what a loser, man. That is so... I can't believe people are that sensitive. And then, of course, Woj got suspended. Like, oh, during all this awesome NBA drama when we need Woj. Yeah. 
You know what's crazy about that too? I feel like ESPN needs him more than Woj needs ESPN. Oh yeah, if Woj left ESPN today, if there'd be companies lined up to hire him. So if Woj really wanted to be put his foot down about this, he easily could have been like, "I'm not taking, I'm not catching this L." Like yeah, and could've. they would have had to t- they would have had to bite that bullet. But he's probably also like, you know what? Two weeks off. This is kind of nice during the most. This is like the craziest time for the NBA coverage. Right. And he's probably like, okay, good luck. Luck. Here you go. Without me, he's probably trying to teach them a lesson as well. Hmm. So there, you know, like there's that too. Um, it was just it, it was a mess. But hashtag free Woj. Because we we stand Woj. We stand Shams and Woj. In a world that we live in, you can have both. You can have Wojnowski and Shams. In a like post, when, yeah. In a post Pearl Harbor society, in we a, can stand both <laughs> Woj and Shams. In a post, in a post Pearl Harbor society, one of the best lines from Nathan for you. Okay, um, we got click or no click coming up. We'll play that in a second. Uh, I want to rapid fire through some other stuff real quickly. Let's do it. I was wrong. The Redskins will be changing their name. I still didn't. And did you see that half-ass like press release they released? Like, okay, okay, I guess we're gonna change it, but we don't know to what, guys. But you know, like the Redskins name is really offensive. Redskins, Redskins, Redskins. Dell Dell pointed this out. I was listening to them this morning. They mentioned the Redskins seven times in a press release where they're canceling the Redskins. <laughs> with you, with the Redskins header. What are you guys doing on, on the press release? And I saw a tweet about this. Somebody said, oh, look, the left cancel culture wins again. No, 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 no. That was FedEx. Yeah. Nobody, nobody during all of this was like, hey, guys, there's police brutality. There's racial injustice. We live in a system that is, uh, that is treating people wrong and putting them behind the eight ball. But before we deal with that, can somebody please change the Redskins name? <laughs> nobody cared. No. Literally, the only reason this yeah. is happening is because Nike and FedEx applied the pressure. No, just FedEx. Because FedEx did it first, and then Nike was like, "Yo, you guys want some of this rub? Let's hey, let's take that into merchandise too." We'll <laughs> because they didn't even they didn't do it first. It was FedEx. It was FedEx because of the naming rights. That's it. Because if Nike took it down, I don't think they I don't think they bend the knee. Because yeah, probably so. You're right. Yeah, it, yeah. It's because they lost their biggest corporate sponsor in FedEx. The naming rights is huge. So when they pulled out, that's what started. It's not a bunch of snowflakes from the left. Like, that's the weakest argument ever. That's just, you're just trying to appease your base again. That's all it is. Uh, rapid fire. Real quick, to, do you know yeah. what's on that? Do you know what's the craziest thing that's going to come out of this? Is Daniel, it's going to make Daniel Snyder richer anyways. He's going yeah. to make more money off of this. More jerseys. More. Follow the money, baby. Yeah. This is, a, this is like when Kobe changed his jersey number, right? Like, I know, rest in peace, Kobe. You're awesome. But when he changed his number from uh, 8 to 24, it was like, uh, you're doing a why? Because it's a new beginning? Because you wore this in high school, but you were 33 in high school your senior year. So, like, I don't, like, did you wear it, like, in 8th grade, ninth grade? What was it? When was it? And you're like, oh, because he's a number one selling jersey now. And he can <laughs> do that. That's brilliant. You do that. And say, you know, like, yes, you do that. Uh, that's, you're right. The Redskins are going to be, they're, it, Everyone's going to have to buy a new jersey. Do you want to be caught wearing Redskins gear if you're a Redskins fan or a Washington fan? Uh, there's a certain demographic who I'm sure will be very prideful to continue to wear those. Will they let Redskins gear in to the stadium? Oh, that's a good question. I know. It's like I'm a professional. I think they will. Do you think they'll go the NASCAR route and ban, ban the Confederate flag? Yeah, I think they will. I do think you think they'll, they'll do a jersey exchange like how in Europe – Oh, when yeah, a player yeah. when a player changes their number, you can go to the team store and uh, turn in your your soccer jersey with the or your soccer kit, excuse me, with the old uh, the old number and get it exchanged for the new one. But at like what, like fifty percent off, or did you get a clean just exchange? exchange it? You exchange it. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh no, I, you know his greedy butt's gonna go like thirty percent off. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. This is America. Yeah, we don't care enough to do that. So, yeah, that's a good point. He's going to make a lot of money, and he's going to be the winner in all of this. Like, is, you think he's going to donate to anything from all this money that's going to come in with all these new jerseys, 
But look, it's going to cost money too. You got to redo a lot of stuff around the stadium. You got to redo everything, uniforms, helmets, every, like that costs money as well. So I, in the long term, he's going to win. You're right. He is going to win. Um, other rapid fire things before we get to click or no click. Can we send some love to Trey? He's awesome. His new podcast, the unnamed podcast. He had the weatherman, Frankie McDonald, the, the viral weatherman who was on Tosh.0. You see his reports all the time on YouTube. Uh, he got him on, and it was just a glorious <laughs> conversation. Did you listen to it? I, I haven't listened to it, though. No. Oh, Trey, man. How long Trey's, is it? It's 15 minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, Trey <laughs> would ask him a question, and Frankie would just take it and cut a promo. It's so good. We need to have Trey on now that I think about it. Yeah, I was going to say Trey tonight, but we had so many topics. I was like, it's all good. We'll get Trey another time. And plus, he, I'm going to be on his podcast sometime. I don't know when. So whenever I'm on his podcast, I'll return the favor. We'll bring him on to promote his. Because he, it's, it's, it's really good, dude. Trey's, Trey's love for life is so good. Like, he's just yeah. so happy to do it. And that makes me happy. When he, when he does stuff, I always tell him, like, dude, you got to just keep doing stuff. Because it's only going to get better. Because there's some parts of it, the podcast, I'm like, ooh, this isn't good. But only- <laughs> yeah, like it's only gonna get better. But it's a really good podcast. You can find it. Um, it's called the Unnamed Podcast on SoundCloud. And I, I'm, I sent him a whole thing. I was like, dude, put it up on Anchor, spread it everywhere. Don't just do SoundCloud. And he went with SoundCloud because he's a millennial. That's why, or he's a Gen Y. What is he? Gen. He's Z. a millennial. He's a millennial. He's a millennial. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's a he's a year younger than me. Okay, so millennial. Uh, other things, uh, big love to Vizio. They're awesome, dude. I have a Vizio TV. I had a huge issue with mine, and they took care of it. So I just want to give them love. They're a cool company. They truly do care. So it's is unpaid. This is not an ad. I just hashtag to, ad. Hashtag from the heart. Thank you, Vizio, for helping me out. That was really cool of them. They didn't have to, uh, but they did. So thank you, Vizio. I appreciate it. And make sure to check out their new TV series that is available right now. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. But for real, uh, much love to them. Because when companies do cool things, I want to give them love. And that was awesome. Spicy Boy Mask, make sure you get yours. I have just a handful left. I will send them out. If I get enough orders from this podcast, I'll send them out tomorrow. I don't care. But uh, if you want to get them, the link is in the bio of this episode. Or you can find it on my Instagram at Raheel Doing Things. It's the promoted link in there. Get it. It's only ten bucks. You're helping out the show. All the proceeds will help out the show, and that is it. Okay, click or no click. Are you ready, Jose? I'm ready. Let's do it. All right. I'm excited for today's. All right. You ready for the first one? Let's do it. IBM job ad calls for twelve year olds experience with Cumbernets. Okay. Which is sixty years old? But I don't. I don't. Frankly, I don't understand what that headline is at, saying. Let me look at. It. I just pasted them. I didn't read them to keep the integrity of the game. IBM job ad calls for twelve years experience with Kubernetes, which is only six years old. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, I totally misread that. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I, I have no idea have what Kubernetes is. I don't either. But you don't have to click it because I saw this story or a similar story come across my timeline the other day. So there's a, so a company was like, hey, uh, you need to have four years experience with Adobe Photoshop. Okay, let's just use that because that's an example we all understand. And the guy who tweeted it was like, um, you can't have four years experience with this because the, that, that coding language is only two years old. <laughs> How do I know this? I'm the one who created it. Really? That was a thing? Yeah. Oh, my the, goodness. So, like, these companies are asking ridiculous amounts of experience for jobs when there's, like, the system that they're asking for isn't even that old. So that's what's happening here with this headline. So, I, yeah, you don't have to click on it. It's just typical companies, like, not understanding what the hell's happening. Dead dead cat gets voter registration application in the mail. <laughs> what? <laughs> Give me a click. Give me a click. Yeah, that that's, that's a click, big dog. How does that uh, happen? How does – okay, by the way, the text messages that you get, uh, it's from your public voter file because somebody texted me from the MJ Hagar campaign or something. I don't know. And 
I was like, how do you, how'd you get my, how'd you get my contact info, woman? And she said, oh, it's in your public voter file. Can I take that out, please? Because I don't want my information out there. So, side note, go ahead. All right, so this is this was a swerve because the story takes us to Tampa, Florida, or so uh, I thought, but it's it's the NBC affiliate in Tampa, but it's actually happening in Atlanta. So I was almost able to say, "Damn it, Florida, you're back at it again." But uh, ro- so it starts with uh, apparently the cat's owner was uh, named ro- uh, Ron Timms, and uh, last Wednesday he found a voter registration application addressed to Cody Timms. His cat, who died 12 years ago, he was a great cat. He was he uh, great indoors and outdoors. He loved his family and loved his neighbors. He was 18 and a half when he passed away. What? How, so what's there the was a huge life push. expectancy of cats. That's a good question. I'm gonna look that up. Because we're dog guys. Cats, cats. It must be like 15 years. Because I, I feel like. Cat owner. 15.1 years. Yeah, it's got to be because I'm thinking about all the people in my life that have cats. And I'm like, man, that cat's been in your house forever. Like, since, <laughs> we, were, since we were in high school. <laughs> so, uh, apparently, I'm very confused by this. There's a huge push. Uh, there was apparently a huge push for for vote, registering cats to register to vote. Um, <laughs> it's just... I don't understand how this happens. Wait. Wait, do you mean like like cats, like how I use like, oh, that's a cool cat, or... Not like the Carol Baskin's cool cat? Yeah, like, what? there's a huge push to get cats registered to vote? Maybe maybe that's what the hell that bit. Hmm. All right, next story. I'm so confused. I'm very distraught by this. So, uh, New Zealand Parliament slide cost... Uh, Slide cost Kiwi taxpayers five hundred eighty-two thousand dollars. Like an actual slide click. I need to see this, or I need to know about this. What do you mean a, a slide? <laughs> I it's I just clicked the story and it looks like it's literally a slide. It cost them how much? Five hundred forty thousand dollars. Yes, five hundred eighty-two thousand dollars. Oh, the New Zealand government has has been embarrassed by cost overruns. To a new Parliament playground and slide, <laughs> <laughs> which has cost the Kiwis pr- the price of a house. Price of a house? Where? Damn. Holy crap! Uh, they've paid the equivalent of seven five hundred and seventy-two thousand dollars, which is uh, uh five hundred eighty-two in America. Uh, and it's literally a a stainless steel slide, but but it has a. Uh, a wood panel like on the side to protect you from falling out of the slide. So it is a bougie ass slide. Okay. Which would justify it being so expensive, right? Is it one slide or is it a bunch of It is a single slide. <laughs> oh my gosh. What's wrong with people? How do you oh get God. Oh, that's so dumb. Does it tell you does it tell you why it cost them that much? Is it like exotic wood or exotic steel or something? Or do they have contractor issues? Or is that just how much the slide costs in New Zealand? Like, hey, <laughs> that's just the cost of living here. I hope you see in in the work that we're doing this for the kids, and <laughs> we're doing the centrality of kids to us as a government. I can't think of a parliament in the world that has put a playground in, on its front lawn. <laughs> so was this a flex? Oh. They could have bought all. They could have bought like new computers for every kid. What are they doing? <laughs> I mean, when you have zero COVID cases, you get to flex like this. Oh, I'm that's sorry. True. That's true. They're you like, get hey, to hey, buy a quarter million, uh, a half a million uh, dollar slide. That's just all. Our just COVID as a money. treat. Yeah. Which, by the way, I still haven't gotten my COVID results. It's been. Are you serious? It's been seven days since my test. I still have not gotten my COVID results. Can you can you and the boys ride the slide like a water like at the water parks? I would hope so. It's an expensive ass slide. Ugh. Did you see what happened at uh, Typhoon Texas? No, what happened? Oh, it's disgusting. So viral Te- outbreak. Dude, Typhoon Texas. They are. It's open. Typhoon Texas is a water park here in in Katy, Texas, and they have like a a night party or something. There's got to be at least 300 people in that in that uh, 
in that wave gross. pool. And there's just no mask, obviously. Everyone's just, dis- like, so close to each other. And they're like, yeah, what? What do you want us to do? Yeah, if they don't want to be here, then they can leave. They're like, we're not apologizing for this. We got a business to run. So it was disgusting. I was like, what the hell is happening, dude? Ugh. Anyway. We are a dumb nation. Yeah, we re- man, we really are. Okay, next story. This is our fourth one. Yeah, man detained by police after biting a seagull who wanted his McDonald's <laughs> meal. <laughs> that, that's pretty self-explanatory. This has to be a Florida story, right? Okay, click it just to see where it happened. Oh no! It happened in England, in oh. Plymouth, England. Is that uh, some some have said though? Plymouth, England is the Miami of England. That's a common. You're right. It is a common global saying. <laughs> oh, Plymouth. Oh yeah, it's like Miami of England. Oh, the the police have detained a man who allegedly attacked an, and injured a seagull. So he actually hurt this damn thing. Oh. Charles Charles Cross police were on patrol when they spotted a man biting the seagull. At about 8 p.m. last Thursday. Oh, my goodness. The man the man claimed that the bird had attacked him for his McDonald's meal. And in the bid to respond, he grabbed it and bit it. He Mike Tyson the, the freaking seagull because what? he took took a bite out of his McNugget. Come on, <laughs> man. What's wrong with you? That's just on you. Those seagulls are aggressive. Seagulls, when they see food, all bets are off. They will so, attack you. So apparently, uh, there's a the seagulls are protected under a wildlife and countryside act of of 1981. Okay. And uh, so the man might be in serious trouble. And of course, uh, the seagull flew away. How? So uh, bit its wing off or something. I might have bit it in, in the neck or something. Damn, that's aggressive, man. You got you got to get tested. You got to get a rabies shot, right? After you bite a seagull. Ooh, the bird. <laughs> Yeah, the bird. Does the bird have to get a rabies? The oh my goodness, man! No. Okay, last story. Last story for click or no click. Las Vegas councilwoman appears to wear underwear as as mask and Twitter photo. Jesus Christ! What do you think, big dog? You want me to click that? No click for me on that one. No, I don't want to click on that. That just sounds like a thirsty ass person. Look at my. Do you think they were used underwear? Of course. I, who was I talking mm. to? Message you about this? I don't think yeah. so. I was like, the next hot market has to be for um, like webcam girls and fans, only fans, whatever. The next hot market is a used mask market, right? <laughs> like selling That's a gross. used mask. No, why not? That has to be. You send We're, it three days later so that if, if you have COVID, it, you know, it, it dies off. But what Does it you, though? Do no, we know that for assume. a fact? Yeah, that's no. Just, based on yeah, we, can't based afford, on, we can't afford to assume something like that. No, no, no. Let, okay, whatever. If it's a week, <laughs> let's say it's safe but not washed. It's okay. been sterilized. No, no, no. You can't sterilize it because then the essence of the used mask is gone. Then, then just send me uh, a new one, like a spicy boy mask, available right now for just ten bucks with the link in the bio. Less right. than twenty left. Okay, if somebody wants my used. Spicy Boy Mask, you put a price on it, send it to me on Venmo, and I'll mail you my used Spicy Boy Mask after like seven days, I guess, because I don't want COVID on there. If Let's I- start the bid off at two fifty. Two hundred and fifty dollars or $2? No, $2.50. <laughs> used Come Spicy on. Boy Mask. We're not the New, New Zealand parliament over here. We don't no. got money like that. They, our people don't got it. money like that. That's a... That's a that's a Jimmy Goldstein flex, that uh, the guy who goes to the Clippers games, he oh, probably okay. has a five hundred eighty thousand dollars slide in his compound, because he's the one who has the infinity basketball court, which is incredible. All right, wait, click that's no a thing. Click. Yeah, he go look at his Instagram. The infinity court literally basketball falls. Court? Yeah, it looks you know like the infinity pool. Yeah, it's just like that. Like the court just falls off. So if you fall, it's, I mean, you probably has you probably have to. Oh, that looks sick. It doesn't it? It look it, with the skyline in the back. Also very scary. Yeah, like imagine how many balls you have to go get. If you lose a ball, then who's gonna go down there? Do you have a bunch of balls? You might there? lose a life. Could lose a life. Okay, if you want to use Spicy Boy mask, hit me up on Venmo at Real Podcast. I'll do it. I don't care. 
Uh, or if you want a we're at a hundred dollars now. Yeah, we're at a hundred bucks already. If you want a new one, you can also get one. And don't forget to get your Almo Remedy CBD. I saw somebody uh, Lamont was tweeting about CBD, and I'm like, hey buddy, why did you pay that much for your CBD? What is wrong with you? Go get CBD from Alamo Remedy where it's only $17.99 and 10% off with code UNICORN. So make sure you get it and they will ship it out to you. They are a great company uh, for Texans by Texans built in Texas. So support AlamoRemedy.com. Follow Jose on Twitter and at Parj94. I was going to say on Instagram, but I know you don't like followers on Instagram. So don't yes, follow Yes, I do. Who do who's, who I know said you, said I you don't, don't want people there. Uh... Uh, 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 then you have to start uh, posting content. I do, and I don't. I I, I only like to flex on there. <laughs> uh, huge thing uh, that just came down right now. Fort Bend ISD announces the school year is going to be 100% online. Oh, order, great! Yeah, in order to give students, parents, and staff an opportunity to adjust to online learning and safety procedures, no in-person extracurriculars will occur during that time as well. So my daughter will start her kindergarten online. That's going to be awesome. You excited? She's going to be home all the time. She's going to be here. <laughs> hey, that's my, good, though. We're no, not putting awesome. the teachers at risk. No, at, that, at risk. it's good. That, that is a great thing. Thank you, Fort Bend ISD, for doing that as we learn more about this. So um, there you go. Uh, Brandon says, I want a spicy boy mask but uh, to match my shirt. Brandon, send me a, a, a tweet or a DM. We'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. Okay, we are done. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, Jose, thank you so much. Great job today. The Spicy Boy Mask, if we get enough orders, I will send out the batch this week. If not, then we'll wait till Monday. Not a big deal. <laughs> All right, Jose, I will talk to you next time. Thank you so much, man. Of course, man. Stay spicy, everybody.